I mess up a lot. I make mistakes, I spill, I'm a walking disaster. And because of that, I've gotten really good at repairing my art. Not because I wanted to, but because I had to. A couple of weeks ago, I was trying out the Etcher Labs cold press sketchbook and I was almost done with the inking. I'd been working on this piece for a couple of hours when this happened. The stencil bent and my pen made a huge mark that you can't erase ink, that's permanent. Now I could have painted over the line with white paint, but since I'm painting in watercolor, watercolor needs to soak into the paper. If watercolors go over another paint, it just doesn't look right. But rather than explain it, let me show you. I'm gonna make a bunch of lines on this test paper here. This is my normal zebra brush pen, which is waterproof, on top of cold press watercolor paper. Now, here's just some watercolor on top of the inks. See how it looks? Nice, right? Let's say I wanna get rid of the bottom half of the line, and I wanna do it before I add the watercolor. I could try gouache paints. Gouache is essentially watercolor, but opaque. They work really well together, but they're both water soluble, which means even when the paint dries, adding water turns it back into, well, paint. But let's do it anyhow, just so I can show you. So if I just wait for this to dry, let's just blow dry it to speed it up, and then, see, I'll dry. Now I'll just add some pink watercolors on top, just like the one on the other side, and then some purple on the bottom. Okay, see that? Can you see how the white gouache paint is suddenly activated by the water from my brush? And now it's mixing with the watercolors and that's not a good fix, is it? But what about acrylic gouache? Acrylic gouache does not reactivate with water. Just like acrylic paints, once it's dry, it's permanent. I do use acrylic gouache from time to time for little tiny fixes. You can see me doing that on my current painting, The Guild. But watercolors need to soak into the paper and the acrylic gouache will just cover the paper up and make the watercolors sit on top of it. It has nowhere to soak in and, well, you get results like this. This is a Uniball Signo. You've seen me use it for my outlines on my watercolor pieces. It's really opaque and it's not half bad for covering up ink mistakes. And this is just a white Prismacolor pencil. Again, not bad, but, well, it's not bad, but definitely not as good as gouache. And I know some of you are thinking, what about erasing it? You could try, but it is ink and you're not really gonna get too far with even the best of erasers. But there's the best and then there's Large Marge. There's literally nothing she can't erase. Large Marge has a sandpaper type of eraser head that is built for ink. She'll devour that line, but in doing so, also devour the paper underneath it. Well, the, the line is gone, along with a good chunk of the paper. You can feel the divot. Okay, so I'm gonna add the watercolor now so you can see how it reacts to the different mediums. The thing about watercolor is, it's really sensitive to the paper that it goes on. I always say, if you have a choice between really good watercolor or really good watercolor paper, choose the really good watercolor paper because it makes such a huge difference. Watercolors look different on different paper, so you can imagine that it will absolutely look different on different mediums, like gouache or colored pencils or even the divot large marge left. All right, so you can see how the watercolors couldn't soak into where the Uniball Signo was. It did a little better over the Prismacolor pencil and the divot from large marge is actually darker. See that? None of these look natural to me. You can tell where the line used to be, which is why I like to add gouache after the watercolors. And I thought instead of just telling you today, this demonstration hopefully helped explain why I do it. And just so you know, I've tried all of these before coming to the gouache after solution. This just came about from trial and error, and for all I know, there may be an even better technique I just haven't tried yet. But for now, this works for me. So I'm mixing pink and purple and white gouache to match the watercolored area. And it takes a lot of finessing, but I actually enjoy matching the colors. It's kind of a fun brain challenge for me. And one of the biggest challenges is gouache dries darker than when it goes on. So you always have to kind of go a little lighter than you think it should be. And also because it's gouache, you're gonna lose the texture of the paper, which is part of the charm of watercolor. You can see the texture of the paper through it because it's transparent. But since gouache is opaque, you're just gonna see the gouache. So you'll notice just a slight solidity, I guess, to it. I, I don't think solidity is a word, but you kind of get the idea. Again, it's not perfect, but if you were to look at all of those lines, I think you'd hopefully agree that the one on the right looks the best as far as, you know, that line didn't exist. And that's what I'm going for. And that brings us back to the painting from a couple weeks ago. That stupid ink line that happened when the stencil just 
bent away. Okay, right now I'm mixing some brown gouache with a little bit of yellow and a lot of white and hopefully it'll match right up. Just put this down right here, nice and smooth. Look at that, first try. And now just my yellow and white and I think that will work. I totally got lucky on this one. Never works out the first try. I mean, you saw on the test earlier, those were two colors, purples and pinks mixed together. It was hard to get those to just kind of match up, but this just happened the first time out and I was really lucky. And that, my friends, is how I fix my ink mistakes. With a little bit of gouache, a smidgen of patience, and a whole lot of epic failures that gave me the tools to fix any mistake that comes my way.